Welcome back artists. I'm going to do a, a nice Christmas scene that involves some Christmas chickadees. I've taken the liberty of sketching it out here just to save a little bit of time using a, just a number two lead pencil just like you'd see with the kids at school. Nothing fancy. Erase here and there as necessary to get the lines where I like it. It's in my watercolor journal and on the opposite side is my Christmas cookies one. If you switch it around like this, then you can see it. This is my this was my last video, but um, working on the opposite page, and so we'll make it get it lined up here, and let's go to town here. Now I think I'll add some ink. It should make it pop. This is a, an Itoya blade pen. Um, line and wash when you add pen and ink or you add a line to a watercolor they typically call it traditionally a line and wash watercolor this was the realm of illustrators uh, long before photography took over illustration or uh, or <clears throat> illustrations in books and you actually had illustrators that would make the uh, pictures um, uh, but I like this particular pen it is water soluble ink or mostly water soluble as we'll see here in a minute but um, Kind of a nice just quill type point on it. Um, you can see the bubble in there I believe and so I've been using it some here but it's a nice pen that um, I like to use with, when illustrating. So normally I would do a three-step process. I would do my initial sketch then I would use my watercolor graphite and um, grab my darks uh, keeping in mind where my light source is and then I would have fun with color at the end. I'm going to add a fourth layer. I'm going to start with the initial sketch, then I'm going to ink over the top of it, and then I'm going to uh, add my watercolor graphite and then have color at the fun, at, at the end. So let's get started here. Now again, keeping in mind, number one rule is where's our light source. Um, unless I put the light source in the painting itself, I put it off on my strong side off at either 10 or 2 o'clock. It's, since I'm left-handed, uh, my strong side is my left side, so I'd put it off the page at 10 o'clock. If I were right-handed, I would put it off the page at 2 o'clock. Um, but I'm going to, so I'm going to put it off the page at 10 o'clock here. And being left-handed to minimize my smudging, I'm going to work from right to left. And I just want to capture, in my mind, I have these chickadees, um, in a pine tree. Now to make it more brilliant, I could leave the pencil lines so you can either erase them or not. Doesn't really matter one way or the other. I think I'll just sort of erase mine. I think they make it a little bit brighter when you get rid of the pencil lines. A little bit more vibrant. Kind of roll, get my my um, eraser to work for me. All right. And if I missed a little bit here or there, that's no big deal. Because I'm going to go over it with graphite anyways. Same as the watercolor graphite. And um, just add more graphite anyways. But uh, So it really doesn't matter too much. <clears throat> whether I erase it or not. All right, so there we go. So there's uh, the sketch. Now I've inked it in. Now let's come over here with uh, our watercolor graphite. This will be the third step. And here again, I'm concentrated on my light sources from the upper left, off the page at 10 o'clock. And I'm mindful of my light source. Okay, there's my my little guy, my little fella. A few of these here. This will be on the shadow side of where the snow was at. Okay. A little bit of... All right, he's got a little tip of his tail. Now, the, this ink that I put on there, 
like I said, is water soluble, so it will run with, with the water that's in the brush. I put it on this up. And whenever you're doing this, the main thing is to know the characteristics of your ink. Is it waterproof or is it water soluble? Now I need to be careful with his eye here because I want him to look alive. So I'm going to leave a little bit what's called a lamplight in his eye. Not overdo it, right? A little bit of gray there. Touch it just a little bit, draw it out. I think you can see too, I have a few, a little bit of the cross hatching. All right, he's got a little bit of a, on his wing. Come across here. He's darker on top than he is on the on his bottom side, so. And I'm sort of just dancing around. All I'm really doing is the whole thing, the whole nature of watercolor is controlling, controlling water, really. Relative light, relative wetness. So I'm having fun just sort of largely going over my, my line painting there with the very corner of my brush, as you can see. Just sort of. Again, I'll touch it in a, on the, usually on the shadow side, draw it out, draw the paint and the ink out. Oops. Okay, same thing here, right? This is the shadow side of my little bird. And see how that ink runs? I haven't really, I don't really have any graphite on it. That's just the ink I put on there itself. Then I have a little white breast, so I want to save that white area. And then the white cheeks. Okay, so same thing here. All right, so here's my branch coming down. Oh, and I forgot my tail on my bird. Goodness gracious. I gotta think about that. Okay, hang on here, folks. There's his tail. I was just thinking about that. Okay, we'll put it in there. Operation Tail Rescue. All right. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so let's have fun with color. Now, chickadees. Here's my, my palette. I do have a buff titanium here and then this is lunar black both of these are dan smith colors these little guys are have this on the bottom on there okay but i'll touch it with a little bit of A little bit of blue. Now what I'm going to do, I like to push color a little bit. I think it just makes it a little bit more exciting like this. If I touch his, his chest and his cheek. All right, a little bit there, a little bit there. Just a little bit, a hint. A hint of that. Now I'm sort of playing, I'm thinking down the road, I'm going to have some light blue up here in the sky. So I'm putting this on my little birds to help give them, make them look a little more three-dimensional. All right, I'm going to touch him there. I want them to look like bright Christmas birds here. <clears throat> okay. Now, since I could have black, I... the Buff titanium and lunar black make great aspen trees, but you can also use them on these little chickadees. So this is black, but I want to be careful how I use it because it it can be like salt in a recipe. A little bit goes a long way. 
and it can quickly take over if you're not careful. Okay, so better, better less than too much. Okay. Our, our, the human eye is so acclimated to seeing black on white that it will tend to pull the eye rate to it. But in this case, since these are my um, center of interest, I kind of want that. So I'll give them a little bit of blue up on top of their head, even though they're technically black up there. Now I'm going to, when you paint impressionistic, you paint outside the lines here. So there we go. We'll smudge them a little bit. I'm going to touch his beak too. And let it. There we go. Okay. Let's add some green. This is Viridian, which is a very strong green. This is Viridian. I'm going to get my pine needle sticking out of my the the um, where they're growing out of the tree branch up here. All right, I lose my edges, touch it with some water. I like the way the human eye wants to play with shapes and complete shapes. and So I'm going to let it run out here a little bit. Exaggerate it a little bit. Now I add a little bit of sap green. Alternating green, keep the color interesting. Same thing up here. Okay, just alternate my greens a little bit. Just make it a little bit more interesting. Add a little bit of lights and darks, lights and darks, lights and darks. Okay, now. my snow in here a little bit. I want it to look like we got a little bit of snow piled up in with the boughs here. And I kind of touch it a little bit and same thing along here. Okay. So much of what we do in watercolor is alternating lights and darks. All right, we have the snow would pile up on the top side of the branch. Okay. All right, I'm going to let it run out. My little birds run out. And then my little tail that I almost forgot. Goodness, how did I almost forget the tail of the bird? Okay. It needs a little bit of... Okay, now, um, color theory. To make my green stand out here, a lot of times what you'll do is use the complementary color. The complementary color to green is red. Now, this may seem a little insane, but I'll take a little bit now. As long as I don't overdo it, I can help. Now, this is, mo this is pretty wet. I'm mostly going on the shadow side, and then when it mixes with the green, it should go to a neutral. But red can be like black and take over. So I want to be subtle about it. Be subtle. Okay. I think it adds a little bit of interest. Now I get to play with the human eye. I'm inviting the human eye to you 
Okay, and I can add a little bit of add a little bit of viridian, viridian and a lizard, and that was a lizard crimson that I put on there. Neutralize each other. Okay, a little bit, but a little bit of the red showing through, and I think it makes it a little bit more interesting. A little bit tricks of the trade there. Okay, pretty much have that. Okay, now we've got, let's have some fun with our, our blue. Now for a sky, we can just about anything. We can get anything we want here. I'm going to go a little bit darker with some cobalt blue. Have a little more fun with that. Sort of draw my, run my needles out. And again, I'm working wet or dry or yeah, wet and dry. My paper is dry, so I want to be mindful of my snow. So I want it to read correctly. So that it <clears throat> largely watching my outside edges. This is just largely filler for my sky. I just want it to look because we can do kind of a vignette, mostly diagonal here. A vignette is a type of French style, which is just a minimalistic. Um, just get to the essence of it, you know, like a little vignette story. It's just the, the principal story and that's it. No, great. I can add a little bit of red too, a little bit of purple. That make it a little bit interesting. And being Christmas, since I'm calling them Christmas chickadees, the green and the red, I think, help a little bit. Just a Swish here or there, a little note here or there. And not overdo it, Joe. Don't overdo it. It's it's fun to do with it. Okay, the fade out to nothing, fade out to nothing. Fade out to nothing. I'm gonna add a little bit of the Blue onto my little guys. Now that they've dried a little bit. Okay, hang on here. So that's. Alternate my blues between the sky blue, which is really cerulean blue, it's a cheap Joe's color and um, cobalt blue, which is the darker blue. <clears throat> and then we can help pull your eye down here a little bit. I don't want to get too... I've got to be careful. I get too much color change. It's going to pull your eye away from my birds, but so I want to be careful. I'm verging on the point of having that happen right now. Um, don't touch these guys a little bit. Strengthen up their colors. And that should help a little bit. Now they have black eyes, but you know what? It's fun to have, fun to play with color. If I strengthen these guys up a little bit. I really need to be careful with my, there we are, be careful with my, my eyes. Okay. Well, there we go. I like that. There's my Christmas chickadees. Um, I'm going to let that dry. Just a second, I'm going to run my blue off this corner. 
do that sort of stay true to the traditional anchored opposite corners. Traditional vignette with opposite corners being open in this case. I'm liking that. Well, I'm going to let that dry. Then I will sign it and um, add that to my Christmas chickadee going. So I hope you found this interesting. hope this was helpful to you. If it is, please uh, consider um, hitting the like button, subscribing as well. And um, I hope you give this one a try. Take a, take a chance of drawing and painting a pair of Christmas chickadees similar to this. And we will thank you so much for following along, and um, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye-bye.